Okay, let's go ahead now one time. It's the Big E, Eric Arnold, occasionally known as the Big E, here in the sports barn. It's Saturday, the 25th of September. So we got the uh, college football slate for you here on this Saturday. We'll try to get it up so it's there by say 9 a.m. So you got a few hours to think it over before uh, the big, what is this, week four? Big week four kicks off. I don't know how many picks I have today. A dozen, maybe more. Look, it can't be any worse than last Saturday. That was a disaster. Uh, I think my record right now is 19 wins, 16 losses. So we're above 500. We got that going for us. And we don't think we can be as bad as last Saturday just because how could that be? And, and I'm a little bit up, you know, I, I'm down for another reason. I'm not going to tell you, but um, I'm up. Uh, we were all over the Wake Forest game last night. So that. It's better than losing, let's put it that way. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I thought I'd just look, hit the highlights of the schedule here. I, you know, my games, a lot of them are off the map games. You're going to go, well, it's not even on TV. I don't really, you know, what fun's that? You know, so I don't have a real hard and fast, you know, I'm not playing these games but they're on tv and you might be interested in them so i just went through you know the popular games if you will uh we got villanova penn state there's no number on this game yet um they always seem to hang these numbers crazy high but you know villanova is no secret that's a pretty good team that's a FCS team, but it's one of those that actually has some, you know, hype around it. it people have heard of it, <laughs> maybe because of their basketball program. Uh, Brian Westbrook starred with Philadelphia Eagles for 10 years. He was from Villanova. So, you know, Penn State coming off a bruising match with the SEC powerhouse Auburn, now playing Villanova. Yeah, it might be a, a down spot there for Penn State, but you don't know what the number is yet. So, you know, if it's Penn State minus 21, well, then you'd want Penn State. Uh, but if it's Penn State minus 41, then maybe you want uh, Villanova. <sighs> big noon, big noon. And, and it's not even big noon. It's big 11 a.m. 11 a.m. I it's they got to do something with this schedule. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe just make a weekend out of it and start playing on Friday nights and uh, doing that, or, or or maybe Sunday nights. Just go head to head with the NFL or something like that. But you know, this is uh, this Notre Dame Wisconsin game. This is an eight o'clock game. They're playing at 11 a.m. again. So, you know, what do you do with this? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like Notre Dame here. I'm um, not that impressed with Wisconsin. We're getting points. I mean, Notre Dame's just so. But they do have a knack, it seems like, of playing up to their competition, particularly in the Chicago area. This game's at Soldier Field. It's going to be on grass. You know, I think that's advantage Notre Dame. Uh, Wisconsin plays on uh, the artificial turf. Uh, they don't get to see the grass surface that often. So I, I just think it, uh, Notre Dame, I think, has a few advantages here. And uh, we'd take, uh, again, not an official play. You know, I, I don't really know one way or the other. I don't really have a hard, fast thing one way or the other. Uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, here we go. This is a big game. Uh, Texas A&M, uh, Arkansas. I wonder if they'll sell this game out. That place down there in Dallas, Jerry World, is so huge. 100,000 people, I guess, that thing holds. Um, I wonder if this will be a sellout. I I'm just curious because this is a really good game. I mean, now that Arkansas appears to actually be good, um, you know, I, I don't know. This game's always close. 
it almost seems like a trap because you're thinking Texas A&M is so much better than Arkansas, but this game seems like it's always close. So I'd probably just take the points in Arkansas. Uh, NC State Clemson. I mean, Clemson might just be bad. You know, they 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 almost get beat last week by a not very good Georgia Tech team, and now they're ten point favorites at a pretty good North Carolina State team. I'm gonna go ahead here and say North Carolina State. I, I you know, I don't know. I really don't know. But I, if I had to lean one way, it'd be that way. Uh, I'd lean to Tennessee down in Florida. You know, Florida coming off that big. Almost close miss against Alabama. I think Tennessee might just catch them napping a little bit. Uh, that's a lot of points. You know, Tennessee's catching there. Uh, you know, the Tennessee's one of those programs that can kind of match up with some of the powerhouses athlete wise. Uh, they usually just make big mistakes that, you know, turn into huge amounts of points. And, uh, so I think Tennessee might be able to slug it out with them for three quarters before Florida pulls away and uh, wins by, say, 17. Uh, so I'd take for Tennessee. Nebraska-Michigan State. Uh... <laughs> See, this is interesting because nobody expected Michigan State to be 3-0. and <laughs> I mean, you know, we've been talking around these parts that Penn State has the toughest schedule in the country. I mean, it's not even close to, from where I'm sitting. Now, frankly, I haven't looked at any other schedules, but Penn State, they've already played Wisconsin. Uh, they've already played Auburn. I believe they still have um, Iowa uh, and then Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State. I think Indiana's in there too somewhere. I mean, that's a lot of tough teams. They've still got to go. Um, man, oh, man. I, I, uh, Michigan State, you know, they were expected to be bad. And now, you know, they're 3-0. and So, um, I don't know. I, I, Nebraska impressed me that they were able to hang with Oklahoma. Uh, I think there's another team that's got some talent. They just can't put it together. I figured Nebraska will probably lose by a field goal. They'll probably line up for the winning field goal, fumble the snap, and then that'd be it. They'll lose. So I'll take Nebraska there. Again, these don't count. These aren't official picks because I really don't know. Alabama, yeah, that's interesting. I normally like to play against Saban in these huge spread games, but he has a knack of doing something where you know, his team will stumble around, stumble around, and then he's going to find somebody that usually it's an SEC team, usually it's a team at, uh, like Mississippi or Mississippi State, and then he just greases them. Wow! You know, just, uh, uh, I told you, you know, he's not going to grease Mercer 80 to nothing. No, he's not going to do that. He's usually going to pick on a conference opponent and do you know, steamroll them and just let the whole world know, hey, we are still Alabama. Don't don't get it twisted. But it, it, Southern Mississippi could do just as well. You know, he might decide he just wants to take it out on somebody because these point spreads lately, the margin of victories have just been a little too close. So I, I wouldn't know what to do here. Uh, Akron, Ohio State, pff, I mean... We could just be bad, and I'm an alum of Ohio State, so I use the we when I speak with of Ohio State, even though I don't give that bunch of nickel of my money, so I don't know why I use we, um, other than I got a diploma from the place, but, uh, you know, we, we, we just might not be very good. Um, we're going to have a backup quarterback playing. Uh, I'd probably lean Akron here. You know, I'm sure that uh, Ryan Day would like to run the score up just so he can say he beat somebody 60 to nothing. But I don't know. We're capable of beating anybody 60 to nothing. I think we gave up, if I remember the numbers, four or 500 yards to Tulsa. To Tulsa. I don't know who's on defense. You know, I was told that it was a simple fix that we would just, you know, which made me think it's a simple fix. So we're so stupid, we're making simple mistakes? Is that what we're saying? What? It's not a simple fix. I think it, uh, 
I've been told from my friend, my, uh, you know, college buddies that we're poorly coached on defense. I'm more of the opinion that Ryan Day is just not bringing in the super A level talent anymore. You know, Urban would bring in the superstars, and I don't know that Urban uh, uh, Ryan Day is doing that. That's where I'm at with that. But at any rate, I'd lean Acker in here. I'd probably take the points with the uh, Oklahoma WVU. Eh, I mean, you know. I'm not sold on Oklahoma. And yeah, you're saying, but you picked them last week. Well, last week was a bad week. I did everything wrong last week. I, everyone telling me that Oklahoma is going to win the national championship. I think you're nuts. I mean, I would take that bet. I, I've always wanted to, I always thought that should be a bet that you can play against the team as far as futures go. And I don't know how you'd hook that up. I haven't given that a lot of thought, but I've often wanted to say, that team's not winning the title. You know, you often you have a strong feeling about, you know, one team or more, and you could like point to them and say, there's no way that bunch is going to win the title. And, and I definitely think that, to me, Oklahoma is one of those teams. They just, I don't think they've got the, just don't think they have it. But at any rate, so I'd, I'd probably lean WU there. All right, let's. Go through my picks before this ends up being a 40-minute video. So here's what we're playing today. What do we got here? One, two, 13. Lucky 13. Sure, why not? We're going to go ahead with Northwestern. I think Ohio might just be bad. So we're going to say Northwestern gets well here. This is kind of a... I think this is probably a contrarian pick. I think most people are probably on Ohio, probably expecting this to be like a 10-6 game. I'm going to say it's going to be a 21-6 game, <laughs> which will get us just enough to cover the number. I think yeah, I don't think Ohio's going to score a whole lot, and I think Northwestern will do just enough to get into the 20s to cover the number. Boise State, Utah State, I have no idea why we're taking Boise, honestly. Uh, my little system says take them, so we're going to take them. Texas State, Eastern Michigan, I think this is basically one of these where I don't believe Eastern Michigan ought to be favored by a touchdown over anybody. So we'll take Texas State there. Um, I think Maryland is a, you know, a team that can score some points. Uh, they, they, yeah, you're saying, well, where were they last Friday night? They, uh, you know, barely squeaked by Illinois. You're right. You're right. They, they, they certainly didn't happen last Friday night. Uh, but they did get the win. So I'm still feeling Maryland is, you know, a real powerful team that can really jump up some numbers. And I think Kent State, they, they played some tough teams so far in uh, the non-conference. I think they might be just a little tired, a little beat up, and you know Maryland might be able to take advantage of that and run up the numbers on them. So we'll take Maryland. Now this is interesting. Uh, here you got two undefeated teams. You got Michigan, who's back. You know I've heard that a number of places, mostly over Barstool. Michigan's back, and then Rutgers, who. You know, they've never been back because they've never been there. Uh, and, you know, so how good is either one of these teams? Um, Rutgers has beaten Temple, um, Syracuse, barely squeaked by Syracuse, and then uh, Delaware. So what do we make of that? Is Rutgers any good? Um, we're going to take Michigan. Uh, generally speaking, when you look at these two teams going up against each other, even in this not very good Michigan era of John, uh, Jim Harbaugh football. It's just Michigan generally beats these guys, especially in Ann Arbor. They, they generally just hammer these guys. So I predict it'll be another hammering, and then, you know, we'll have, oh, I look forward to at least a month's worth of Michigan. Uh, joy, joy, joy. They're back. Hooray. The blue, yay! That'll be fun. I'll enjoy that. So, yeah, uh, I was going to say Michigan goes ahead and runs over Rutgers here, and we'll lay the 20. Um, 
this is the model loved this game i don't know much about it i other than i you know i think it just likes it's looking at florida state and saying that's a bad team you know the model looking at the numbers looking at the yards gained yards given up it's pointing at florida state and it's saying that's a bad team and, and i think we can kind of say that you know they they played their guts out against uh, Notre Dame and came up short. Then they, you know, really didn't play very well at all against an FCS school. And then they got hammered on the road. So how good is Florida State? You know, how good is Louisville? Um, you know, Florida State, I think, is one of these teams that when a program falls apart, it falls apart, and sometimes people just cannot believe it's happening. It's like, oh, my God. I mean, they can't lose four in a row. They haven't lost four in a row since Burt Reynolds was there. This is impossible. And then they just go ahead and do it because they're falling apart. So that's kind of where we're at with that. We're, we're going to say Louisville just keeps Florida State on the, you know, the collapse. You know, the building's collapsing. I mean, you can, don't try to catch a falling knife. So we're going to go ahead there with Louisville. San Antonio. San Antonio. That's kind of what I like about college sports is that the names change. You know, in other words, uh, you know, you got your pro sports. The names are almost always the same. Yankees, Red Sox, Pirates, Cubs, that sort of thing. They've been there for a hundred some years. So, you know, you get some stability there. And some names are always the same, even in college football. But then you got teams like San Antonio. I don't even know that it was a team 20 years ago. Uh, but now these guys, they're actually pretty good. They wanted Illinois. Uh, here they come again. And this is kind of, we're trying to repeat the Illinois game, where San Antonio went in there to Champaign and beat those guys. And Illinois was coming off the big emotional opening day win over conference opponent Nebraska. So Memphis coming off the big emotional uh, sectional victory over uh, Mississippi State. Uh, we figured they're down just a little bit, and San Antonio is actually really good. So we're going to say San Antonio steals it there uh, in Memphis. Uh, what else we got? Um, speaking of Illinois, uh, sure. You know, we played again. Uh, so far we've been, I think we're like 2-1 and one with Illinois. You know, we played them against Nebraska, won. Uh, we played against them, I think, when they played at Virginia, won. Uh, but then they beat us with uh, when they beat Maryland. Um, they got their quarterback back. I mean, the quarterback got hurt in the Nebraska game, and then he missed a couple games, and now they got the starter back. So I think that helps them. I think they're finding their footing now. I think they just were a little tired uh, there maybe at Virginia. They, they think they found their footing a little bit against Maryland. Let's put it this way. If they play like they did against Maryland, they're going to cover this number against Purdue pretty easily. So we'll go ahead there with uh, Illinois. Uh, Kentucky, South Carolina, I don't know why this one's on there. I have no idea. The model put it on there. Frankly, I don't know much about these two teams. So there you have that. Uh, UAB, Tulane, same deal. I, I know both teams have really good coaches. Um, I don't know why it's on there. <laughs> now, believe it or not, I know a little bit about this next game. This Florida Atlantic. I think Air Force just lost a shootout with Utah State, one of those you know, a hundred play games where it just goes back and forth and back and forth and nobody can stop anybody. And I don't think the Air Force has much of a defense. Whereas Florida Atlantic, I think they've already seen an Air Force type attack this year where uh, they played Georgia Southern and they kind of run the, it's not a, totally the apples to apples, but they do have a similar run first offense. So I think Florida Atlantic has an advantage here. The only thing that makes me nervous at all is just them going up into the mountains. It's just such a foreign atmosphere for a team like Florida Atlantic that doesn't travel very far. 
usually they just travel around the south and now they're going all the way out to Colorado and the air is thin and it's just different if you don't go there often. So that makes me a little nervous. But otherwise, uh, you know, I think it all lines up pretty well there for Florida Atlantic. So we're going to take a shot with the weather or atmosphere, you know, notwithstanding. We'll take a shot with Florida Atlantic. I like this game. Indiana, I think this is just a mismatch. I think Indiana's played two of the top 10 teams in the country in Iowa and uh, Cincinnati. And, you know, I, I just don't think they were ready for Iowa. You know, Indiana was favored in that game. To me, that means Indiana's going in there like, all right, we're bad. We're bad. We won a bunch of games last year in the uh, crazy year. We're pretty good. Here we go. Here we go. And Iowa just went out there and go, we're Iowa. Bam! And that was that. Uh, it, so I don't think Indiana was ready for Iowa, even if they had been ready. The, game, the score would have been closer, but I was going to win that game. Now, I think they were ready for Cincinnati, and they, they, they kind of slipped away from them a little bit at the end. But that was mostly a touchdown game either way, the whole, the whole way. And, and Cincinnati, I think, is legitimately a top-10 team. Yeah, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. You know, it's hard to judge these non-Power 5 teams because they don't play the same strength of schedule. But I think Cincinnati's a top 10 team. So those are two really good teams that Indiana's played already. Um, now they get a, a, you know, a much weaker team in Western Kentucky. I just don't think Western Kentucky matches up with Indiana. I, I, I just think Indiana's going to score on these guys. And, and I don't think Indiana's defense is really pretty good. So I don't think Western Kentucky is going to do a hell of a lot as far as scoring points. Uh, so I think that all leads up to Indiana covering this number pretty easy. And then lastly, well, uh, look, I, I saw most of that Oregon-Ohio State game. They beat us like we stole something. I mean, they kicked our ass. I'm going to just say Oregon, we're, we're just going to play these guys like it's the old Chip Kelly Oregon. You know, they're just going to run up huge numbers, just like an elite team would, and, you know, win by five touchdowns, you know, every time out, just because they can. Arizona's not that good <laughs> at all. So this is a team that they could get all over. Uh, I mean, I'm just thinking to myself, looking at that number, 29, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying the one specific instance of jumping out at me, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I don't know why. But Ohio State, we played Illinois many, many years ago. This is in the Trestle years. This is in the Trestle years. This wasn't even when we were in, you know, Urban Meyer RPO uh, run tempo, score 70 point mode. This was back in the vest days where, you know, we were good for maybe 42 points. We were 41 point favorites over Illinois. Uh, so I don't know. To me, Arizona is about the way Illinois was back in the day. You know, a pretty bad power five team. And Oregon's an elite team. So. Only a 29-point favorite here? Yeah, I, I'm kind of thinking Oregon is going to cover this. I, I, unless this is just a sandwich game or something where they're looking ahead to Stanford or what have you. But if Oregon comes out and plays at all like they did at Ohio State, they're going to kill our Arizona. That's just kind of how I see it. So that's it. I don't know if we're going to have NFL games for you. Uh, we got a packed schedule today. I mean, I do. You know, I don't know where I'm going to find time to sit down and look at the NFL schedule. Uh, unless some games just pop right out. Of, look, when I'm dialed in with the NFL, I can find the winners in like 10 minutes. I've heard other handicappers say that too, that it'll take them hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to do the uh, college slate. And then the NFL is done in like half an hour. Just boom, done. You know, it just jumps right out at you. Last week, it didn't jump right out at me for whatever reason. Maybe it's just because I haven't been following it closely enough. So I'm not, 
you know, I just don't have enough information. I'm just floating in the ether right now. And that, that may, it, you know, if I, if I don't have a good read on it, you won't get an NFL video. Sorry. But we're not going on 5 again. Fuck that. All right. Um, good, good, good. Hit the like button if you choose. That always makes me feel good. Let's see if we can not keep it rolling here. Keep it generating W's. Uh, and uh, at a minimum, we'll see, I guess, early next week and uh, catch up. Good. Eric Arnold signing off. <laughs>